Welcome to CCK Live. Uh, today I'm joined by Michelle Dottori and Rachel Foster, um, and we're going to be explaining Chapter 31 VA benefits. Um, the Chapter 31 program, also known as the Veteran Readiness and Employment or VRE program, is authorized under Title 38 of the U.S. Code, Chapter 31. Uh, many of you may be familiar with this program under a different name. The program was formerly called the Vocational Rehabilitation and Employment Program, uh, but the program is a benefit for disabled veterans and service members who are looking to increase their likelihood of obtaining employment. Uh, specifically, the program helps entitled veterans with service-connected disabilities and an employment handicap to prepare for, obtain, and maintain a job. Uh, it also helps um, entitled transitioning service members to go through that process. The VRE program also offers services to help service members and veterans with service connected disabilities who are currently unable to work live as independently as they possibly can. Uh, so today we're going to go through a little bit more information about this program, what it includes, who's eligible, some things to look out for, um, and then we'll wrap up with some closing thoughts. So Michelle, turning to you, uh, maybe you can start us off to um, give us some information about what the program includes and who's eligible for the program. Sure. So what includes, um, so right now it includes a, a wide range of career services. So it includes career counseling, rehabilitation planning for employment, job training, job seeking skills, resume development and other work readiness assistance, on the job training, apprenticeships, non-paid work experience. Sometimes they will assist veterans in starting their own businesses uh, for those who are severely disabled and unable to work in a traditional employment. One thing I found interesting is the counseling is actually available throughout your program and not just in the beginning. So it's there if any problems arise or issues occur while you are in maybe a apprenticeship or a, you know, a non-paid work experience. Um, for eligibility, so if you were discharged on or before January 2013, there is a 12 year basic eligibility period. If you were discharged on or after the eligibility period no longer applies, so there's no time limit. The period prior to January 2013 begins on or after the following date. So it's the 12 year starts from the date of separation from active duty or the date you were first notified of a service connected disability rating. Um, so they, the requirements are a little bit different if you are currently an active duty service member versus a veteran. So for active duty service members who are entitled to VRE services, if you expect to receive an honorable discharge, if you obtain a VA memorandum rating of 20% or more, if you are participating in the Integrated Disability Evaluation System, IDES, or have an injury or illness that prevents them from performing military duties, um, most service members that are participating in IDES are presumed to be entitled and then are you are determined by the VRE to be in need of vocational rehab services. So that is for veterans that are active duty, well, excuse me, people not quite yet veterans, active duty service members. For veterans, you have received an honorable or other than dishonorable discharge. You have a service connected disability rating of 10% or more. And then V, V, R, and E services have deemed that you need rehabilitation services. So those would be the two criteria to make you eligible for this program. So there's obviously very specific criteria here for uh, both veterans um, and or active duty service members to be eligible for the program. So make sure that if you're looking into the program, um, you, you know, you either look at the specific regulations or work with an accredited agent or attorney, um, because it can get very complicated very quickly. And, you know, the, the criteria is uh, very specific. Um, so in terms of how the program itself works, Rachel, turning to you, um, can you walk us through a little bit about how, you know, how the program operates um, once veterans, you know, are deemed to be eligible for, for participation? Sure. So typically once entitlement is established, the veteran or the service member will be evaluated by a vocational rehabilitation counselor or a VRC. And that purpose of the evaluation is to assess the interests, aptitudes, and abilities of the individual, assess their service-connected disability and their ability to hold a job, 
Um, it will also include vocational exploration activities and goal development. So, and these tools will be used to determine suitable employment and maximize independent living. The assessment will include exploring labor markets and wage information, and all of this collective information will then be used to select a VR and E program track and develop an individualized rehabilitation plan. So as far as what is a rehabilitation plan, um, it's a signed agreement between the recipient and the VA. These plans are divided into five tracks or paths, which veterans or service members can follow depending on their specific circumstances and needs, um, which was all outlined during the evaluation process. So just as a quick overview of what the five potential tracks are, uh, the first one is reemployment. So this track can help veterans and service members return to their former job and support the employers in meeting that individual's needs. Uh, another track is the rapid access to employment. So this track can help those seeking a job or career that uses an existing skill set. Then the self-employment track is for service members or veterans with a service connected kind of disability and employment barrier. And the self-employment track can help them with starting their own business. Um, and then employment through long-term services. This track can help those with a service-connected disability and an employment barrier get the education um, or training that they need to find work in a different field. And lastly, there's the independent living track. So if you can't return to work right away and your disability limits your ability to perform some activities of daily living, you may qualify for services that can help you live as independently as possible. So, so now we know how a veteran or active service member uh, becomes eligible for the program and how the program operates. So I guess the next question is, well, how does someone apply for the program? Um, veterans or service members looking to apply for Chapter 31 benefits should fill out and submit VA Form 28-1900, which is known as the Disabled Veterans Application for Vocational uh, Re Rehabilitation. Um, it, it's a specific VA form, like all things in the VA world, they, they require a form um, to be completed and submitted, and veterans or service members can submit the form online through a VA's website, in person, at a local VA regional office, or even by the mail. Um, and if they're going to mail it, they should mail it to the Department of Veterans Affairs, the VR and E Intake Center, which is, and just so you have it, the P, uh, PO Box 5210, Janesville, Wisconsin, um, or of course, um, you know, you can seek the help of an accredited representative and they would, I'm sure, be more than happy to, to speak to you about it and help you through the process. Um, Michelle, turning back to you, um, there, are some port there are some important implications perhaps that participation in the vr &E program um, has on other benefits, most notably the TDIU benefit and how those two kind of um, work together or in some cases could work against each other. Um, so can you take us through that? Yeah. So when you're applying for TDIU benefits, you're saying I'm completely disabled and unable to work. When you're applying for vocational readiness and employment, you're saying that I want VA's assistance in finding employment. So the two are kind of at odds with each other. When you're applying for the VR in E program, you're basically giving VA the option to assess your ability to work. So at this point in time, it could go very well for you if you're also going for TDIU benefits and you could get a finding that says, you know what, they're not, I can't rehab them. They're not gonna be able to work in an environment without severe accommodations. It's just not going to work and this program isn't going to work for them. And you have a formal finding by somebody that is considered to be an expert in a vocational field, like, you know, kind of like vocational experts. Unfortunately, sometimes it could go the other way where you find someone that says you can work and you can do this, 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 and this, and you have limited, you know, capabilities to do this, but this job would be feasible for you and that we can maybe help you or you maybe you don't need our services. So it could swing the way where it's an unfavorable finding for unemployability. I will say that these records are often in your VA claims file. They're very flagged, they're usually notified and there's what BA calls end products tracking, you know, the claim. So if I'm coming in as an adjudicator to adjudicate your TDIU claim, I'm also seeing that you have another claim pending for vocational rehab and it's easy for them to click in and see what's going on. Um, not all doom and gloom if you get an 
unfavorable finding um, for, you know, kind of going towards TDIU and it's saying, you know, that you're, you can work. It's just something that can cause an additional hurdle in order to get those unemployability benefits. Obviously, you know, we understand you need to provide for yourself, sometimes your families as well, and you do what you need to, which is sometimes going through the VR and E program. Um, it's just something we think people are very need to be very mindful of, and you don't quite understand when you're applying for both how they could impact one another because they're disability and a completely different program that's not dealing with disability compensation. So it's just something that um, to be very mindful of. And if you're not sure how it's going to really impact you, it's really a good time to reach out to somebody, an accredited representative, a VSO, you know, an attorney, just to talk to someone about how it impacts, especially if you're not seeing the same where, you know, you're saying you're disabled and VR and EA are saying you're not. So it's just something to be very mindful of when you're going into this. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, as you can see, these are two very important but very different and overlapping programs in some ways um, that each have ramifications on the other. So as, as Michelle said, as Rachel said, as I've previously said, it's never a bad idea to consult an accredited representative or someone who can walk you through the process, help you apply, look at your eligibility, um, and also determine what ramifications and um, uh, consequences might come from application of one program or participation in one program uh, versus, you know, continued um, appeals or claims for VA disability compensation. Um, so that's all we have for today. Be sure to check out our other videos and don't forget to follow us on social media. Thank you. And as always, um, thank you for watching.